Let's take a look at another example, but now it will be more of a qualitative example. So here I'm going to let a ball drop. So my ball is going to drop and then hit the ground, bounce back up, hit the ground again. It's going to do this three times and each time it loses some energy so the bounce gets smaller and smaller. So there are three bounces. Bounces once here, here, and here. So let's call that A, B, C, D, E, F, G, where BDF are the points where it collides with the ground and A, C, E, G are the points where it reaches its maximum height. And I wish to plot the displacement time graph, the velocity time graph, and the acceleration time graph. Let's start with the displacement time graph. So the displacement time graph is going to be pretty straightforward. It's pretty much going to follow the shape that the ball is moving at right here, except for one distinction, which I'll tell you in a little while. And for all of this, I'm going to pick up positive and down negative. So the um, ball is going to start right here. right? Let's say it starts at 1 meter. So that's going to be 1 meter. And it's just going to follow this shape and go down and bounce, bounce, and come off. Now the thing to note here is that on each bounce, the time it takes for it to come back up or go back down is going to decrease because the distance uh, that it travels through decreases. So this time here is going to be longer than that time there. So Time between bounces decreases. Because it's got less distance to travel each time. So it's at the same acceleration. It's going to take the same time. Two bounds in between. Now let's take a look at the velocity time graph. Now as the ball is moving down, it's going to start with the velocity of zero because that's where I dropped it. It's going to increase in its downward velocity negatively. And because the acceleration downwards is 9.8 meters per second squared, it's got a negative acceleration. I'm going to have a negative slope as it goes down and it's going to be a constant slope because acceleration is constant. So it's going to constantly go down until it reaches the maximum speed right before it collides with the ground and then suddenly right after it collides with the ground it's going to flip its velocity and move back up but with lesser speed because it lost some energy so then it's going to do that and it'll come back down with the same slope coming down with the same slope until it reaches the peak which is C so this point is going to be C that point is well this whole time here while it's doing that while it's flipping its velocity, that whole thing there is going to be B. And it's going to be A right here. All right, so just to be clear, it's going to flip its velocity very suddenly to the positive velocity, go back up to C where it stops, and then it turns around and goes back down to D. 
before colliding with the ground and then flipping its velocity again really quickly and up to a lesser speed at, and then coming back down sorry it's moving back up to E at this point and down to F and then back up to G where its velocity is zero. So the thing I want you to notice here is that this area is going to be the same as this area because the time it takes for it to get from B to C is the same as the time for it to get from C to D where this point here is going to be D. And likewise this area is the same as this area because the time it takes for it to get up from D to E is the time is this sorry the distance that it takes to get up from D to E is the same as the distance for it to get from D to F. So those um, areas are the same and just to reiterate the slopes here this slope this slope and this slope are all the same and those slopes are equal to minus 9.8 meters per second squared and finally we can plot the acceleration time graph so during these portions here from here to here here to here and here to here those accelerations are all going to be minus 9.8 because the slope of the velocity time graph is the acceleration but during the portions where it's flipping around its velocity really quickly you can see a sharp spike and that's going to be correspond to a sharp positive slope in the acceleration so this is going to shoot up really high to some really high positive value so I'm going to leave that open top here to represent really high positive value and then come back down with negative velocity and then hit the ground again and spike up negative velocity and then hit the ground again for the third time and then come back down here so this is A right here and then B is where it hits the ground and C is somewhere in the middle here while it's still going down and D is where it hits the ground again um, E is somewhere here in the middle where it gets to the top so these points here C, E and G are where it gets to the peak right so even though it's stopped momentarily at the peaks the acceleration still remains the same because there's still gravity acting on the ball at all these points and that gravity is the same gravity that acts on the ball while it's in the air but not in contact with the ground so it's going to maintain that same acceleration even though its speed its velocity is zero at the peaks